to Pear Tree Point Beach, the security guard house, gate house, right near the road, right near the chain link fence. Uh, as Pam submitted for the record, uh, the current six by nine building is in disrepair. It gets beaten up pretty badly during the winters, high tide, big windstorms, hurricanes, that, that little shack basically gets it. So Pam came to us with the proposal to put in a new replacement building that will be taken off site during the off season to make it last much longer. So it's got it, a little four cylinder engine, wheel stick on Well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> certainly uh, she went to the architecture review board. I believe you got a copy of that approval. Uh, she needs to go to the zoning board of appeals because it's too close to the road. Wow. Uh, one <clears> of the <throat> issues here is if, if that hut, shack, gatehouse, whatever you want to call it, gets pushed further back, it really doesn't serve its purpose because it's too far into the property. It impedes access to the boat ramp and it really gums up the traffic flow and parking. So it really has to go close to the road and the ZBA recognized that. The issue here is the whole property is in the flood zone. Most of the property is in the uh, velocity oh, zone. Yeah. The, there's small parts of the property that are AE14, which is still in the flood zone, but not velocity. So no matter where Pam put it on the property, it's still gonna be in the flood zone. So we did reach out to the state and said, look, we got a situation here. And they understood that, that it is, the state doesn't really like ZBA's granting variances for non-properly elevated structures. But in this case, they understand that there's no other way to do it. But you can't have the guard walk down a flight of stairs and even to, for his, the air conditioning in the structure, it would have to be eight feet in the air. So and it's a sen essentially a, te a temporary structure. Portable, yeah. It's portable structure. What's nice is it'll be off-site, and it's pretty much a prefab, somewhat a prefab. Pam's going to tell you more about it. But it's just basically for security reasons. Yeah, yeah. And well, check the beach stickers. Basically. Check the beach stickers. And it's going to be within a few feet of the existing uh, location. Uh, there is a provision in Section 813 of the regulations that the director and assistant director can go out to a site and, if necessary, waive the requirement for coastal site plan review. That was done in this case because, literally, you're just putting this thing on in the parking lot. So it doesn't impact coastal resources. The parking lot is not a coastal resource. And so we waive the coastal site plan review. The public park is, as of right, in the R1 zone. So Pam doesn't need a special permit for this. All she needs from the commission is review of work in the flood zone. Uh -oh. And will this hut or shed have any flood impacts on neighboring properties? And the ZBA has uh, granted a variance for the applicable heights and things like that. All right, so we're not digging a foundation. No, it's, no, being a, right. it's able to be lifted almost as a portable structure and on a no seasonal basis. It is an existing structure. Right, so it's not going to. Roughly the same location. Right, no yeah. one's living there. Yeah. So during a, a big flood. <laughs> There's no okay. health, yeah, safety, Next. welfare. Right. All right, uh, I don't really need to hear about the structure Next. anymore. Okay, so uh, any, anybody out in the audience like to comment on that? I don't see any, unless you really want to get out. I would just like to comment. I'm sorry, go ahead, sorry. Pam Gary, Director of Parks and Rec. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Pam, Pam Gary, Director of Parks and Thank Recreation. You. I just wanted to add that um, this would be an improvement to it because we will be taking it off site. That security sh shed or hut has been there since 1960s. It in looks that like same it. Spot. <laughs> right, maybe a different one at that point. But it stayed there 12 months out of the year. So I think it'll be a huge improvement to be removing it and only why it's there, why it's being used for four months and then off site. Oh, it looks better too. I mean, okay. Yeah, that's all I need. Okay, say. I didn't see anybody else out there, so can you get a motion to close the public hearing? Wait a second. Mr. Okay. Rand, all in favor? Awesome. We're going to probably deliberate this later, but don't stick around, please. Okay, you don't have thank to. You so much. <laughs> You're welcome. It. Uh, thank you. Number two, landfilling and grading application number 190. 189A, David Joyell, 86, Near Water Lane, proposal to regrade the rear yard of the property and install a replacement stormwater retention system and inform related site development activities. The 1.25 acre subject property is located on the east side of Near Water Lane, approximately 350 feet south of its intersection with Nickerson Lane, and is shown on assessor's map number 51 as lot number 62 and is located in the R1 zone. 
Uh, if you've been to the site, you know it's, uh, this property is at the end of a long driveway off near Water Lane. It's an interesting circumstance in that a drainage system was installed, say, between, let's call it 10 years ago, plus or minus, and the system has failed. So the applicant is here on behalf of the property owner to talk about uh, bringing in some necessary fill to put in a new Caltech system right behind the house. You also have in your packets a letter from the neighbor, Mr. May, about his concerns about water flow and drainage issues that they've had in the neighborhood. Uh, engineer Wayne Devonzo is here on behalf of the applicant and can talk to you a little bit about the conversations he's had with Mr. May and how he can address the issues brought up by Mr. May and uh, Darren Ostefine, the Assistant Director of Public Works. Go ahead, sir. Good evening. For the record, Wayne Devanzo, D apostrophe, capital A, V A N Z O, Bierfield County Engineering. Uh, you know, we are proposing basically replacing a, a failing uh, retention system with uh, 12 units of Cultex uh, and bringing in the fill necessary to provide the adequate cover for it uh, and, you know, and, and uh, separation from restrictive layers that were found there. Uh, we'll be routing the rear portion of, of the roof, the runoff from the roof, to uh, to the system, and it is adequately sized. It's sized for a hundred-year storm, actually. Um, and you know, we feel the the existing one um, is too shallow, is bleeding out onto onto the property, causing part of the problem that they're having down lower, and, and that the neighbor is uh, is is concerned with. Uh, this should. Uh, alleviate part of that. I spoke with Mr. May this afternoon um, and I, I think uh, um, persuaded him that, you know, that we at least won't be, we're making anything worse and this should be marginally improving it for now. Uh, there was uh, some desire initially to do a little more comprehensive plan and take care of the lower area, which gets very soggy, um, which has sort of been put into a phase two sort of uh, the situation for now, mostly due to finances, that that would require some more, uh, you know, some more drainage uh, structures and practices. Um, but uh, we are also looking at maybe down the line doing something as a joint uh, concern with with the neighbor to try to alleviate that whole area and to try to fix that up. Yes, the the existing condition is that there's a problem with the drainage system. Right, and they wouldn't be expected to, they'd be expected to fix the drainage system, right? Yeah, I think that when Wayne brought this in, that was when you read through the application, yeah. that's really the justification for the application, is really to find a way to get a new drainage system in there. And as Wayne mentioned, it's about 120 cubic yards. 120 of yards, about yeah. seven truckloads. About seven truckloads, yeah. Because uh, the test pit, when, when you explained to Darren, the test pit you did wasn't really great soil, so you're it's almost not, having... Yeah, it, it's got a high groundwater lay. I, I, the system that's in there, I think, is, is partially inundated all the time as it is. It's oriented the wrong way. It's a little undersized, I think. Was it just built wrong at the, yeah, at the time? Yeah, wrong, and it's a How old is it? I think, as well. Ten years old? About that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's 2000. Okay, so the, basically the fill gives you, gets you out of the it groundwater. It gets you up, and that's why we need to put, we have need to get it up, elevate it, and get it, get the separation, get, get enough cover over it so it, it's not an embankment, so it won't just bleed out the way it is now, give us that sort of distance. And, and your right. expert opinion is it will uh, improve? It should, imp you know, it's not going to totally solve yeah. certainly, but it will, it should improve the situation now in that the runoff from the roof, I think at least, will be largely mitigated. There's still the rest of it that, you know, which comes from other properties, which comes from the lawn, which sure. comes from other areas that hopefully later we can address. But uh, And that's what I was kind of getting at. Like in, in this in this application, you wouldn't be expected to remedy that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, I asked my questions. Anybody else have a question? All right. Uh, anybody out in the audience have any questions? I have a question. Sir, uh, sir, sir, sir yeah, sorry. Do me a favor, just introduce yourself yeah. and then uh, direct the question to us, and then we'll direct the question sure. to him. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jim Tweedy. I uh, owner of 108 near Water Lane, which is just south, contiguous to this property. I don't know anything about this other than I'm concerned that seven truckloads of fill is coming in contiguous to my property. Ask it, yeah, ask, is ask. that going to affect my property? Great. 
customer question. Perfect. Good question. And then, uh, Jeremy, you can also talk about the regs as well in terms of where they can bring the fill up to. And right. Okay. So. Here, and I'll let Mr. DeBonzo, as an engineer, I'll let him answer as an engineer. I'll, what they've done, what they've shown here on the plan is the fill is central on their property. It's more to create a flat area right behind the house and then a steep slope, somewhat steep slope, but basically they're creating more of a flat area to put this new drainage system in, which should be an improvement over the existing. So they, Wayne has designed it such that the regrading is in the center part of the property, right, basically right behind the, the house, uh, just up of the existing wall that goes through the middle of their backyard. Mm -hmm. And will it raise the, it, already when they redid that house, it raised the property up above my property, although it doesn't seem to drain into my property, but they put a lot of fill in then. Is it going to raise the, it even further? Just the part right when you walk out their back door, that area which is 40 feet right straight out their back door will be lifted in the range of three feet. That's my estimation. Uh, Wayne, Wayne can so 40 feet back, three feet up. Yep. But I think, I think the within, no regrading within 20 feet of a property line. Within 20 feet of my property line? That's correct. But I think the goal is, Jeremy, the goal of doing that is to keep water onto his property and not have it go on. That's my question. Property. Is that going to come my way? Well, other than the fact that you're downhill of the property. I realize that. That's, that's my question. Will it increase the amount of water that comes my way? I'll have the engineer answer that question. The goal would be no, but yes, uh, well, <laughs> yes, yes. We, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, no, no, no. It's good. The, you're asking the, ex the right questions, so. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, just to, to address that. Um, no, we're not changing the, um, the, the drainage pattern at all. Uh, the drainage pattern is remaining as is, so no water is being redirected in any direction that it isn't already going, and we're not increasing the runoff amount at all. Um, hopefully we're retaining more than is currently being retained. Um, yeah, Any new is, impervious surface, Wayne? No, no new impervious surfaces. Nothing, nothing is being added. So the way it is now, it will not, it, it will only improve the way it, it is should now. I will see no increased water I, here. I can see no reason that you would. Yeah, it, it's, it's a larger system. It's going to hopefully be uh, installed properly, and it should um, reduce what, what you're seeing right now. And, the, and I, there's not, it's not going to be, elevation is not going to increase on this side. And the, the over floor. here, you're not going to get any increase. It's just, it's just that you know, 40 feet or so from, from the house uh, to here. And from here on, it's from, the, from anything below that retaining wall is remaining untouched for, for the time being, at least. I have no other questions. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are great questions, actually. Um, yeah, and the right, that's exactly what we try to mitigate is not increasing uh, water flow off the property onto another property. Uh, anybody else out in the audience like to speak to this? Okay, anybody else have any questions? Seeing none, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close. Second. All in favor? All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Item number three in the public hearing, landfilling and grading application number 449, Grin Harder, 38. Christy Hill Road, proposal to regrade the property to create a level rear yard with associated retaining walls, install a new stormwater management system and perform related site development activities. The 0.52 acre subject property is situated on the southeast side of Christy Hill Road at the southeastern corner formed by its intersection with Oakshade Avenue and is shown on, assess on assessor's map number 27 as lots number 138 and 139 in the R-130 zone. Uh, this is, application is to construct a new retaining wall. Uh, the, as you can see, if you've been to the site, there's now a pool under construction that's been approved. And as the applicant was building the pool, they realized they wanted a flat area in the yard next to the pool. So this application is actually a cut and the creation of a wall on, let's call it the east part of the property, which would allow the applicant to have a flat backyard. To do that, they're keeping this new wall, which is in the range of three feet, two to three feet, at least five feet off the 
stockade fence, which is the eastern property line. Uh, Harry Rocheville is here from McCord Engineering to talk a little bit about uh, the cuts, uh, the proposed wall, and uh, the drainage that they're going to be installing to accommodate the regrading. This is a property now as a house, and the, as I said, the pool is under construction in the, let's call it the southeast corner of the property. Good evening. My name is Harry Rocheville, R O. C H E V I L L E. I'm with McCord Engineering uh, representing the Harders. As Jeremy stated, there is an existing single family residence on the property. The addition is to the rear of the property, rear off of the Oak Shade Avenue, the pink uh, shape shown on the plan, and the pool is under construction as well. There is a, uh, as along with the addition in the pool construction, there was a uh, underground detention system. That was installed. That is in the yard, the north yard along Christie Hill Road. As I said, that is already installed, and that was designed to handle a great portion of that rear yard as the uh, the slopes do go gradually from east to west towards Oakshade Ave. Um, there are no new impervious areas proposed as part of this application. It is simply for the land filling and regrading. Uh, specifically with that retaining wall being 10 feet off of the east property line. Uh, that Can wall you point out the retaining wall on the, on the this orange shape that runs parallel to the line here, returns here, returns towards the pool. So the idea of that wall was, as Jeremy stated, to create a, sort of a flatter recreational area in the middle portion of the yard, um, just north of the pool. We did some uh, test pits on site as part of this, just to ensure that by adding this wall, we wouldn't be collecting any groundwater with our, with our perforated pipe that will be installed behind the wall to control uh, hydrostatic pressure and any infiltrated stormwater. That, will, that pipe will be directed to a yard drain, which will go to the installed detention system. And as I stated, that detention system is adequate as installed to handle uh, the entire backyard as shown. as. There was already curtain drains and trench drains proposed in the lower retaining wall, which we're collecting that uh, runoff anyway. So now we're just collecting it a different way. It's all going to the same place. Uh, there's about 130 yards net cut associated with um, leveling the backyard. And that could be in the section that's shown on the top of the page is through um, the backyard from the retaining wall right through the patio that's off of the back. And remind me again, how, how tall is the retaining wall? Uh, the top of wall is uh, 87 in this area. Yep. And, 80, and bottom is 83.7, so it's about 3.3 okay. in that area. And along the pool, it gets, I think, to 3.7 feet, but at no point does it uh, get greater than 4 feet. And you have some, I see some plantings along that wall or something. Is that what those, those little are, circles are? Yes, and at? actually, those are existing. Oh, they're existing? Yeah. Okay. So the idea will be to, okay. to save those. Right. It, it basically, the only screening they would have uh, from the neighboring house to the east, mm -hmm. which is up, as you can see, it's 10 feet higher. So these trees, which will be on top of that platform, if you will, mm -hmm. give them a little privacy while they're swimming. Um, two, two questions. Is, so the entrance and exit via the, par the parking area is actually an oak shade, correct? Correct. Okay. And then, so I guess the, the property to the right, if you're looking at that, so it would be number 40, Christie Hill. That property looks like it's right, how far is it between your retaining wall and the house that looks like it's not but 10 feet? Yeah, I would say it's right around 20 feet from the retaining wall. Our, our retaining wall is shown 10 feet off the property line. I believe their house is just about 10 feet off of the property line as well. The, the stockade fence is the property line. So there's 10 feet on either side of those? That sounds about right. It doesn't look Approximately. Look like. On the globe, on like the side yeah, Be careful though, because you got different angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just oh, exactly. for the record, a couple commissioners right. are looking at Google Maps. I would say not yeah. more than 10. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, that stockade fence, uh, which is there now out in the field, uh, really is 
pretty much it's within a foot of the property line. Be looking this yeah. Way, so you can yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, you're right. Because you're seeing this side of the house. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions? And no. Harry submitted a March 5th memo with uh, the details of his proposal. Uh, anybody out in the audience like to speak to this? Nope. Right. This is great. Uh, can I get a motion to close this hearing? I'll motion to close the hearing. Second. All in favor? Yes. Thank you. All right. Let's go, Kevin. Uh, general meeting. Uh, item number four, mandatory referral number 1-2019 Parks and Recreation Department Dealer Property in that big lane. Request for a report on your CGS 88-24 for substantial improvement to town property, including the walking cross-country path and parallel parking along that big lane. Um, so uh, we, we asked staff to draft the positive mandatory referral, I guess. Uh, yeah, you have a copy of the draft in your packets? Dated uh, March 12th. It's a good job talking about the proposal. Um, they just saw EPC, what, last week? Uh, for the cross-country path? Yes. Uh, the hearing was Wednesday, March 6th. It was continued to Wednesday, April 3rd. Okay. And Commission then, might see it as soon as April 9th. Okay. Uh, anybody have any comments on this? None? All right. So uh, do we have to vote on it? You have to vote to uh, approve the report. Could uh, I get a motion to uh, approve the report as submitted? I, I move to I guess accept that report as submitted. All in favor? Okay, great. Four to zero. Report issued. Um, item number five, coastal site plan review number 322. Flood damage prevention application number 371, land filling and regrading application number 412. Jennifer Leary, 10 Seagate Road, request for extension of time to commence project. Do you remember the Seagate here? Um, they want to go to October 10th, 2019. Is there any reason why we shouldn't just go to the end of the year? Uh, I, did you talk to Paul yeah, I talked to Paul Harris earlier. The reason they're asking for the extension is they're having, uh, they're working on selling their house in Greenwich, and they'd like to sell it prior to beginning site work on Seagate Road. Um, he's asking for a six-month extension here. If you were to grant more than that, they would certainly not object. Uh, just so we don't have to see it again, I would just go to just the end of the year if that's right, suitable. Yeah, so okay. if you could just change yep. that. To so December 31st, 2019. Yeah, could I get a motion to, do I have to vote on this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we get a motion to approve the extension to December 31st, 2019. All motions to approve extension. Second. All, second. All in favor? All right, great. Number six, coastal site plan review number 319, flood damage prevention application number 368, land filling and grading application number 407. Dr. David Pereira, no, didn't. Pereira, 20 Raymond Street, request for extension of time to commence and complete project. Right. I, I don't think you have anything in your packets on this. We've been working closely with uh, Steve Jones, who is the designer builder for Dr. Pereira. It's the vacant lot at 20 Raymond Street. No, we do. Yeah, we got it. Oh, you got it. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, and basically what they've run up against is uh, to develop this very <laughs> difficult lot, they had to go to Environmental Protection Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, they yeah, actually, uh, earlier, later, late last year, late 2018, they did apply, they'd done their due diligence, the sewer connection permits, all that. They did apply, their contractor applied for a zoning and building permit, got through zoning, got through building, and it sat in building. Uh, the contractor never picked it up and then had a dispute with Dr. Pereira. And thus, nothing was ever started construction. So they've reached out to us and said, what do we need to do to get this back on track? They have a new contractor on board. Uh, we noted that the EPC approval is still valid, but the ZBA is going to take up that question potentially on the 20th. And the question here is, uh, when planning and zoning last left it, they gave them a completion date of May 2019. And certainly, they haven't started, so they certainly won't complete it in the next 60 days. Do we, and we often give them completion dates? Or I think start it varies. Dates? Okay. I think in this case, they're asking for an extension to get underway. And I think when we met with Dr. Pereira, he said it would take about a year to build this thing. 
Yeah, because uh, that whole cantilever design and um, exactly. So, so if they what, expect to, if they if the Z if they if they need ZBA approval, they would go to ZBA in April, which would allow them to get started in May. Wait. So can we change this to a start? Sure. Construction date. I assume that once they get started, they're going to keep moving on. This. Yes. So I would say, uh, and now, and the site has been. They've done some of the work. They yeah. did some of the tree work. They did some of the preliminary work in anticipation yeah. of the contractor moving. So it's along. kind of like a bare site now. Last time I drove by. Um, so we'd like to see this completed at this point. Um, so why don't we give them a start? Time of uh, September 30th. You think that's long enough, or you want to go even end of year? I would think that would be reasonable to at least start start with the foundation. Yes, which okay. is really the first thing is to have. Now we have a foundation permit in hand, but, but to actually the concrete in the ground. Yes. Concrete foundation <clears throat> okay. work. Foundation work underway by September 30th. Is that okay, okay folks? Yep. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve that a amendment? To uh, what is the amendment to the uh, to the original coastal site plan review? The original coastal site plan review to require that they commence with construction and have a uh, have the foundation foundation underway. poured uh, yeah. by September thirtieth, which is essentially a six month extension of time. Perfect. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Right? Okay. File motion to approve extension. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Second. Great. Number seven, update regarding Mike Nicklaus, Two Silver Lakes Drive, request for final certificate of occupancy and update on status of sidewalk. I wish Steve lake. was here because this is his sidewalk. Uh, yeah. this, is, this is his. It's that now is turned into, seems like a quagmire to a certain extent. Yeah, it's a, it's a very awkward situation because uh, you may recall that this property is at the corner of Silver Lakes and Tokenik Road. Tokenik Road is a state highway, so the state has jurisdiction over the sidewalk. So Mr. Nicholas was proposing to build, and you may recall it's an asphalt sidewalk now, it's about three to four feet wide. Well, the state has since redesigned the whole thing, so now it's a five foot wide sidewalk that's concrete. <laughs> oh, and, really? The and they pushed uh, it out. I mean, it looks like it's like well, this little Well, this little pathway, path. yeah. and now they're making it into a five foot wide concrete uh. sidewalk and it pushed it, so now it's up partially there, on Mr. Nicholas's property. No good property. deed goes oh, unpunished. Goes on, can it they do that? And, oh, and he needs to give an easement, so now it's stuck in DOT legal. Uh, so that Holy is God. his description. The latest is an email from Mike Nicholas to Tracy May <laughs> yesterday. Uh, Mike saying, I'm awaiting a review response from Matthew in the easement department. I would like to confirm that you've agreed to the sidewalk plan that I've drawn. Uh, let me know if anything is needed. Uh, and then, of course, DOT says, once you've obtained the easement, have your engineer submit the easement documents <laughs> and a plan showing the sidewalk, the pedestrian <laughs> ramp, and easement areas. I don't mean to laugh because I know this. This is what they do in that great big building on 91. Yes. You know. There's people up there whose job it is all day, every day to just make life different. So, uh, Mr. Nicholas is trying to yes, this along. Yes, yes. So I guess you but know. what the issue we have, and normally I I've met with Mr. Nicholas numerous times. I said that's fine if you take more time. You're working yeah. in good faith. But now they're ready to move in, right? Now, right. no, he's got a temporary uh. CO, which we would be willing to extend. Uh. The problem is his bank has said to him, "Come on, you've been there quite a while with the temporary CO." We need you to get a permanent right. CO. We can't so, hold him responsible. For no, this no, case, no, right? absolutely not. So help us. How do so we? How do we fix this? My recommendation to the commission would be to issue a permanent CO. Yeah. Keep in mind that Mr. Nicholas still owns that adjacent property at number four. Yeah. And I think no, that's a good idea. We both have the understanding that, that he's not going to be able to get a permit from this commission or from our office if that sidewalk isn't. Complete. Yeah, I was thinking that or a bond, but that, right. that we can offer him the choice. Okay, why don't we do that? Uh, okay. What kind of bond would we do? Like a five hundred dollar bond? Is, the, 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 no, we need a little. What? Why? Why make him pay more money? Just, just 
I mean, okay. not, we're clearly not going to approve anything else. Okay. It's, yeah, it's why don't you tie, yeah, we don't want to tie no up any money. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. That, thanks. Okay. Please. Okay. But he's not involved. Yeah. No. no. Has, okay. Nothing permanent. No, and again, it was like a, a valiant effort to totally you know, I, on our part. It just, it just turned, common sense goes out. We learn, way. but we learn every time we do this stuff, right? Uh, when we did the model block down in the road and uh, yep, down the road wants their business flash. district. David Genvey's going through the same thing. Yeah. DOT wants things a certain way, and... This stuff was built in, well, not in this case, but, in, but Post yeah. Road's been around for a long time right. without standards, but, okay. Right. Well, you look at Tokenique Road. There's been an asphalt path three feet wide there. You would think DOT would have a little common sense and say, whatever you're doing, make it better. And mm -hmm. I know Ed Gentiles had this problem on Hoyt Street, where oh, yeah. they wanted just make it a little better, do a couple fixes, and the state said, nope, now you have to make it a fill in the blank, yeah. which means now you need plans because we need to see what you're doing, yeah, yeah. which means you need to hire an engineer, which means we need to then get our engineer. All right, enough. It's, well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off, right, but, but you Mr. know Mr. Nicholas what I mean. has been through this for well over a year. All right, uh, so uh, we'll get a, so Either a bond or... No, we're not doing a bond. No bond. No, just no. tie it to... Permanent CO can be issued. Yeah with the understanding that no work can be done to number four till. Okay, so this is gonna be amendment to the? To the flood damage prevention okay, application. Okay, application. So can I get a motion to make an amendment to the flood damage prevention application to uh, make it reliant on, that there's a sidewalk before what, two Silver Lakes? Or yes, get... along the south side is two Silver Lakes. Silver Lakes. Motion. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. Great. Got it. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Regarding Neville. Regarding the following, number eight, special permit application number 173A, Nexit Al-Asani, Al 847 Boston Post Road, proposed to establish a hair salon, personal service establishment, first floor space, permanently occupied by Coco's Cafe. Uh, extremely straightforward. Uh, there were some concerns, but they weren't zoning-related issues, and... Uh, I would think, uh, I didn't see any no need to change Everyone it. was at the hearing? Uh, I'm sorry? Everyone was at the hearing? Not, no. But, no this was last week, right? Okay. Okay, but we still have a quorum, we still can vote. Yep. Uh, yeah, right. okay. So can your motion as submitted? Uh, to approve as submitted, I'm sorry. So move, Jim Rand. Kevin, yeah, I need you then. Yeah, second. All in favor? Three to Zero. No, it was abstaining. Yeah. Unless you watched it. And... I honestly didn't watch it. Okay. Well, then that's but I read the fact. Yeah. Number that's nine, flood worry. damage prevention application number 391, Fogel Property Services, LLC, 679-685, Boston Post Road, proposal to regrade the front and side yards of the pr property to create a low point and to install stormwater management features, install generator and HVAC unit on platforms, and to perform related segment activities within the related area. Uh, can we just take a, a pause? Jeremy, you just want to tell Mr. Nicholas? Yeah, did. Mr. Nicholas, they, uh, the commission uh, uh, basically authorized me to, and Mr. Keating, to grant you a permanent CO uh, with the understanding that no work can go ahead at number four, but until then you get a permanent CO, keep working with DOT. And, and we're sorry you had to go through that. We were good intentions. And I, I, I know. I, I want to thank you all. I know you'd rather be home with family. <laughs> no, but it, it, with it's partially things. our problem that you're dealing with the state, so. We're going to get it done. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, good luck. Sorry okay. about that. Thank you. All right, so back to that. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Vogel's property. They were doing a little drainage to uh, eliminate the, I'll call it the water problem in the corner, eastern corner of the building, straightforward draft resolution relative to the drainage system that they're installing. Again, <laughs> these are too many easy ones lately. Um, I didn't have any changes to the draft resolution. Anybody have any comments? All right. I have no comments. Could I get a motion to approve as submitted? Motion. So move. Jim, I'll second it. All in favor? Great. That's Please good. Abstain. Got it. Number 10, amendment of special permit application number 11R, site plan Oxridge Riding and Racket Club, 512 Middlesex Road, request to install a warm-up ring. You have a letter in your packet from 
Amy Zabatakis, who's here this evening, to talk a little bit about this riding ring, which will be used, I believe, exclusively during the horse show, but or mostly during the horse show, when they need a place for horses to warm up before their, uh, call it, Routine? Uh, routines, if you want. Competition. Yes. Competition. And so this new warm-up ring is shown on as part of the attachment that Amy submitted. I can't believe you haven't picked up the, the uh, equestrian nomenclature. Yeah, we're working on it. It's right. going to take a while. Um, Ms. Zabatakis. Amy Zabatakis, Richie Lover. Um, I don't have much to add to the letter, but just thought I would be here in case you have any questions. But yes, basically, the uh, United States Equestrian Federation does require a certain amount of warm-up or schooling areas for equestrian competitions. Um, and so they need this additional space where there will be practice jumps before horses go into the main ring um, for their competition. So there's three rings there. Is, is that what there's I saw? Two, there's now. two outdoor rings yeah. right now, one indoor ring. Okay. And this will be for the, the, the June show that's outdoors or other horse shows that are outdoors. So they have this warm-up space before they go into the main larger ring. Okay, and my only other question was... I thought that was kind of the area where the tents were going to go for like outdoor activities, right. that sort of thing. So help the, me. The tents are the tent. Uh, what they've sort of referred to base, vaguely as the event lawn is actually closer to the building. So they okay. purposely put this um, right on the property line. To the property okay. line, um, you know, it is not right on the property line it's um the same location as the one of the larger yeah, yeah, that's right. but there's still plenty of space for there to be tent space etc there okay anybody else have any other questions right so this is 25 feet from the northern boundary mm -hmm. and it's well that's within yeah. they're allowed to do it right? yeah. correct right. it's All just right. a, it's a modification Go ahead. Of the just, just a question for so i understand mm -hmm. where everything happens these three against the property line are what we're talking about, correct? Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Jason, yeah I was the... curious, can you just point what's mm -hmm. different? Okay. Okay, no, you're, sorry, you're in the wrong area entirely. That's, those are the paddocks. These, this is the large ring that's been there for some oh, time. Can you lay it flat? Yep. Oh, there, sorry. Right here. Okay, this is, this is the large ring that's been there forever. So, and this is the new that's town your property. property. Right, right, right. And here's so the middle thing. This is the large ring that's been there forever. This ring was added um, and has been approved by the town. This smaller ring right here is what we're talking about adding. Okay. And um, Mr. Sini, space. that's that exactly. Awesome. That's the that say, event area. I'm sorry, Amy. When you say adding, you're simply just making that area flat. There, it will be it. It will be a, a sand ring, so it'll be flat with sand on it and a fence around is it. Is there going to be any net fill in there? Uh, no, it'll be. I mean, they have to in order to make it. Let me go back to the. Thank you. Well, we like to have them up here. <laughs> um, so, for a for a riding ring surface, there is they'll they'll have to dig out and put. Um, it's sort of a, a a stone base, and then there's what looks like sand. It's in the equestrian community called footing, but. So it will not be a net fill. It will be flat, but they do have to dig down in order to have the drainage. You're, you're taking stuff out, and then you're putting Correct. different material in. You're not add, necessarily adding more. You're not no, it's raising like, it up. Right? Think of like a turf field when yeah. they put in the drainage underneath. They dig right. it out, put the drainage underneath, Precisely. and lay the turf on top. Precisely. Okay. Yes, and so yes, and so that's designed no so that so that it will drain. So if there's rain, you can still use the riding ring, and that's the same way as the other riding rings were designed and built. Who knew you needed three outdoor rings? No. Perhaps if they'd known that ahead of time, we would have asked for it the first time. Yeah, I apologize no, for no, that. No, no, no. It's it's, it, listen, it's a big project. It's coming along. Yep. And I think we're going to hear an update on that, actually. Yes. Uh, so could I get a, uh, it's amendment to site plan? Yes. Could I get a, a motion, motion? to amend the site plan. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Jeremy, you get an update associated with that project, sounds like. Sure. Next on the agenda is an update on the Ox Ridge Riding and Racket Club. As you all know, construction's been ongoing there for a while. Uh, I was called a few weeks ago. We had numerous issues with the anti-tracking pad and making sure that dirt wasn't getting into the road. Uh, Dave Keating's been working with these gentlemen out who are sitting in the second row on trying to eliminate getting dirt in the road, which means getting the anti-tracking pad, which is just rocks, 
at the end of the driveway that the trucks can drive over to not bring the dirt on the tires in the road. And some cleaning areas too, some right? Cleaning if, areas, I mean, washing areas. Uh, for the past week or two, uh, Jonathan has been, who's part of the construction company, has been sending us pictures at the start and the end of the day to show that it's in good shape both at the start and at the end. What we want to make sure it's also in good shape during the middle of the day, that at 2 in the afternoon, if you're not driving through the neighborhood, you're not going to see dirt all over the street. Like That's the whole okay. point of the erosion controls. Yeah. So we're going to continue to monitor it. We're going to continue to work with their team on making sure that not only at the start of the day and the end of the day, but during the day, because uh, there's nothing worse than there's big piles, clumps of dirt, or things that fall off the trucks, or whatever it might be, that are falling on the main highways of Darien, and those end up getting into. And, and totally acknowledge it's been probably one of the wet, wettest. I've been here 20, 19 years, by far one of the wettest time periods. But still, there were some pretty nasty days out there. So please continue to work well with staff. We got pretty close to having staff back here, and we didn't want to. Right. That, well, Dave so. asked me, do I need to come tonight? I said, not tonight, but if we're zoning here, enforcement officer, yes. Yeah, they, and they, I don't want to see, I, I love Dave, but I don't want to see him again. So, right. on this issue anyway. So, that's, so that's great. It's not so, only at the beginning of the day, not only the end of the day, but during the day. Yes, please. And again, like, I know it's, we know it's been wet, but it's been pretty gnarly out there. Uh, so, you've heard us. Thank you. All right, next item. Uh, update of status regarding medical marijuana, marijuana moratorium of dispensaries and production facilities. And so, I don't, you weren't here before. Okay, so, well, Jeremy's going to tell us about it, but we, the town's put in place a moratorium um, when medical, you're welcome. Uh, it was a temporary moratorium. Yeah, temporary, temporary moratorium. moratorium. Right. Yeah, so. so, this is back a few years ago when the state of Connecticut first allowed medical marijuana. They had dispensaries and production facilities. And at the time, the town of Darien had to make a decision. Do we will allow, want to allow one or the other? And the Planning and Zoning Commission said, no, let's have a more. We've never allowed them in the history of Darien. Well, it wasn't even legal. It wasn't legal. <laughs> and so the commission said at that time, let's have a moratorium, temporary moratorium, at, while we consider consider what what's to going to do. happen around us. So in that, that they'll just stop you there. Mm -hmm. We were just trying to understand how this is going to play out statewide. I mean, it's a brand new statute that allowed medical marijuana dispensaries. We really had no idea to handle how to handle it. Like even right. other, I think this is kind of ahead of the ball game in right. relative to other how states. The state and, would regulate it, yeah. how many dispensaries they would allow, what the restrictions are. Uh, there's a lot of conditions that the state puts on dispensaries and production facilities that were unknown at the time. And so Mrs. Liu, who's in the audience, asked me about it when uh, we were at some local event. So it sparked my mind that, wow, we haven't talked about this for a while, and the moratorium is now, well, they probably expired, right? right. Well, I think what, what my opinion is, is that that use has never been allowed in Darien. Yeah. So that is the premise I continue to go on. I did speak to John Luizos earlier today oh, good. and okay. talked about that what John mentioned to me is the state, the surround, many of the surrounding states allow the sale of recreational marijuana, marijuana used for non-medical purposes. And so if the state of Connecticut does pass that, what are the ramifications for Darien? And so I've started working with the town attorney on how, what might be the next steps for the town to make that decision Certainly, it will come down to the nature of the legislation passed, whether a decision needs to be made by the Planning and Zoning Commission on how to regulate locally, or whether it would go to the RTM, the legislative body, to pass an ordinance. And, and that's what the article in, uh, that I asked what, to include right. was the Westport, right? Westport, right. Is this, generally speaking, analogous to Wilton and the uh, no alcohol. I think in many ways it is. Where because uh, alcohol was legal in the state of Connecticut, but Wilton and other places probably, but Wilton forbade it. Right. Wilton said specifically, we don't want. Till till about three four years ago, Wilton didn't allow liquor stores. 
So certainly the town will be able to regulate yeah, it in some way, shape, or form. There's now one, I think That's one liquor store will, right on Route 7. Yeah. So the question is, and again, it depends on this, any state legislation, how that may play out for future regulation locally and what does the town wish to do. So John, Luizos, and I are going to keep an eye on that. We'll probably report back to you in a couple months with what happened at the state and what are the next steps for the town. Um, okay, so bottom line, there's no reg locally that would allow it. Therefore, somebody would have to come in and try to amend the regulations before it would be allowed. And therefore, the process, like any reg amendment, public hearing, discussion. Yes. Why is it, why couldn't they do it? Right. This is what John Luizos yeah. and I discussed on the phone earlier today. I mean, there was no regulation against tanning salons or, or that. Uh, well, here, let's see. Right. So here's the, exactly what you said, Good Jim. question. The question is, is in the history of the town of Darien, have we ever allowed marijuana to be, be sold out of a storefront? The answer is no. That's one argument. It's never been allowed in town. There's nothing in the regs that specifically allow it. Someone else can make the, that exact argument you had, Jim. Look, we allow retail uses. And whether, you, whether you're selling folders or microphones or men's shirts, or go it's back still to, retail. Or even alcohol, right? Or I mean, alcohol, right? We, or a new technology. That or a new technology, right. right. iPods, right. right? Verizon sells iPods. Those weren't. So maybe the right. point is that we have to right. decide How whether we're going right. to not permit it as opposed right. to whether it will See, be permitted. I, I, I agree with what I understand to be the thrust of Mrs. Liu's request, which is do something. Right. The question is... How do we do it? Yeah. Right. So I'll, I'll continue to work with town council on what are the appropriate next steps, and is that a town ordinance, which might be the next step, which is this town is saying we don't, right? We Just don't like, well, allow mm. plastic bags anymore, yeah. or we yeah. don't allow the sale of marijuana, or yeah. we don't allow dogs off leash yeah. on whatever. It might be a town ordinance, which and not so much a zoning which would be RTM, maybe not so much a zoning regulation. So that is really where we're trying to figure out what's and, the best path. And does be. the RTM want to be proactive? So is that the right forum for this question? And so we're looking at, we just started looking into so it. So in, 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 again, I, you know, we, we can have a discussion if we ever got an application, but my view would be that doesn't fall into any of our categories. Like, and for certain like the, the uh, salt cave, we did have to allow for a special permit review, right? right? So service-oriented business we typically have, although are we... Yeah, it's kind of interesting as new tech, just what Liz says, there's new technologies that salt caves were around five years ago. Infrared sauna. Right, the yeah. cryotherapy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of them. So I think there's a couple issues here. We're still starting to research in terms of what the next steps might be Again, we don't know if the legislation at the state level is going to pass. Too early to tell, but at least to be prepared and anticipate. Yeah, so you're doing the legwork. So, so you'll come back to us in four to six weeks. Is that a reasonable time frame? That's a reasonable okay. time. Good. Good. All good questions. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Um, skip item 13, which was my update from the Blake Commission, and then we'll go straight to the deliberations. Table that to your. When is your next Blake meeting? Yeah. Uh, next week. Okay. So probably the following. Okay. Just we'll throw it to Jeremy yeah, and oh, totally. he'll yep, put absolutely. it on. Flood damage prevention application number 399, Town of Darien, Pear Tree Point Beach, 139 Pear Tree Point Road. Proposal to replace an existing security gatehouse with a 6 by 9 gatehouse a few feet from its existing location of form related site development activities within a regulated area. Okay. So let's deliver it. It's, um, I see no problem with it. I, I think it's no problem. problem. I see no problem. All right. Given that, uh, Fred, do you have something that, to vote? Uh, well, what, what we can do is oh, put together, to we put together kind of a very basic resolution. The issue here is uh, obviously the gatehouse, Pam's goal is to have it up and running by Memorial Day, which she realized is about 10 weeks away. She's still got to order the shag, get it delivered, things like that. So Fred has threw together a few notes uh, in anticipation of uh, deliberations. deliberations. So. Uh, you can read through his notes and take a minute or two to read through that, and then if you want, you can certainly vote on it. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, oh, my bad. Yeah. It's one. You're the chairman. You read them. Do you want, I'm, I mean, it's a few pages, so I'm not going to. 
let's just review them quite quickly. Okay. What we'll do is take everything into consideration that was uh, talked about tonight at the public hearing and deliberated on tonight and uh, incorporate, incorporate that into a, a final draft resolution which will go ahead and circulate to the commission. Okay. Um, and, and then we're going to vote on it, the final draft next week, or how do you want to... Do you want to do it next week, or do you want to vote tonight? Or the week after? Next week is... The big event for next week would be the zoning regulation... Let, let's just vote on it next week. The one week's not going to screw them up. One week won't screw them up. Okay. We'll but you have, a, you have a you know, positive... I think yes. you pretty much wrote it, but... Okay. <laughs> is that okay? Next week is good. Put it, I mean, first on the agenda, even, whatever. First on agenda, good. It's a town-oriented thing, so we'll put that... Beautiful. Beautiful. Right. Only regarding the following, if public hearings are closed, time permitting, land filling up and regrading application number 198A, David Joyell and 86 near Water Lane, proposal to regrade the year, rear yard, the property, and install a replacement stormwater retention system and to perform related site development activities. My comment is only, you know, put the regular language we do, just, you know, that if any waters don't infringe upon the neighbor, but uh, run off, I should say, now water. Mm -hmm. any, anything else, guys? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Land filling and grading application number 449, Bryn Harder, 38 Christie Hill Road. Proposal to regrade the property to create a level rear yard with associated retaining walls, install a new stormwater management system, and to perform related site development activities. Um, I would, my comment would just be to make sure that that, yeah, it, it, it conforms with the site plan, like the screening and such, just given the proximity of the neighbor's house. But that, that would be the only thing I would kind of highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. All right. And next one. That's it. Approval of minutes, February 26, 2019. Uh, do we have enough people here? Sini Cunningham, Rand. Yes. No um, issues. I got nothing. You, Mr. Rand. I have no comments. Okay. So motion to well. approve as submitted. I move that they be approved. Cap. Submitted. submitted. All in favor. Three to zero. One abstention. All right. Last. We will uh, calendar and project status update. Sure. Uh, the project status, remind me, I have one other business item. Uh, calendar. Next week is the public hearing on the zoning regulation amendments, the big booklet from Glenn. Uh, that'll be in the Mather Center. Wow, we got kicked all the way there. It is the busiest time of year, so we're in the Mather Center next week. Wow, that's, that's a lot of... It's that's Tuesday. a lot we're of... We're usually like... Tuesday eight. night at 8. What, do we come fourth or third on the... Uh... It was just one of those things that... <laughs> it's a, it, We weren't supposed to meet next week, so we... And it, it didn't make sense to move some people. I think Board of Finance is in here and some other people. Oh, I would so, love to kick down the board. Not so, just joking. All right. Uh, that'll be a very full night. Uh, we're getting some good feedback. We've sent out... The proposed regulations and map amendments to lots of people. Oh, oh, this, wait, so which map? These are the seven properties in town. Okay, so the specific properties, specific not property. the municipal use. Not okay, municipal yeah. use will be in April. Okay. So the seven specific properties that the commission discussed, <clears throat> one on Old Kings Highway, uh, one was on <clears throat> West Avenue. Post of the Halstead building. Uh, nope, that didn't make it in. Okay, because we decided yeah. not but to. But I did it. meet, friend and I did meet with Mr. Hawes subsequent to that, mm -hmm. and he's considering whether to bring that proposal separately. Oh, good, okay. One of the issues we had, and I mentioned this to John, is when we put these forth, we really needed good maps to show what we're rezoning. Usually you get a survey and you draw it out. So on some of the properties we discussed, we couldn't piece together a map good enough, like the gas station was one where we're like at the corner of uh, Tokenique Road and Five Mile River Road. Yeah, right? yeah. We were like, we don't even have, we can't even draw it out <laughs> on a map. So you'll see that the six or seven that are coming before you next Tuesday, uh, you may get the property owners here saying, yes, please rezone it, or no, or whatever comments they have. Oh, wait, but you've reached out to every property owner. We have sent a letter to each of those property owners, and we've sent letters to everybody within 100 feet of those okay. property owners. And we've emailed the proposal out to land use attorneys, engineers, surveyors, architects. Okay. So we can expect the owners of the seven, some or all of the seven, plus... We have actually got some interesting feedback from some of the seven property owners. Okay, and if they can't be here, you'll provide an email or something, well, or, or the feedback. One or person has said, I can't be there. 
I've said, please send an email. The commission can decide whether they want to keep the hearing open for your comment. If you know what your comment is, send the comment to the commission. You're in favor, you're not in favor, whatever it might be, but if you can't make it, send it. So there has been one person who said, I can't make it. Yeah. I said, maybe the commission will leave the hearing open. We can decide that next week. Yeah, or if they want to provide an email. I, I an mean, email would be helpful. I think, I think we want to be as uh, understanding yes. of the property owner's policy. We're not trying to ram any of these and through, it, if it, you would. That's what I said. I said the inclination will be to continue the hearing for a couple weeks to give you an opportunity yeah, to make okay. a voice. And it could be that there's a, so many different items that we continue the hearing on the reg right changes. Okay, and those those business zone reg changes. Can we get the the the, um, the book online? The book is online. It is online. So the final what we're going to be looking at is right? now online right now. Darianct.com. Are we going to get a new copy? Because we yes, made some amendments. Fred and I had to reformat the okay. whole thing yeah. because we had to put it in a format of what are the actual wording that is going to be changed in the regulations. Okay. Glenn gave us the. Yes. Let's change the concepts. Yeah. <laughs> and Fred and I said, oh, but what does that do to the wording? And yeah. so we had to, when you get it next week, you'll see a lot of redlining and striking out and delete this section. This and is how the sausage is made right yeah. here. So Glenn got out of it. We appreciate all that work. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we'll talk a lot about convenience, food okay. service, and eliminating the seating requirement, and no longer allowing hotels, motels, and inns, and merging yeah. service business, service business east. So it's going to be, Glenn's going to, we're, talking to him first thing in the morning about what kind of presentation he's going to have and then okay. walk the commission through. And you're anticipating some comments on that as well? Yes, very much. We've started receiving some comments. Good. That's so kind of what we're looking out. for. Um, and it's online right now, darianct.gov, right? darianct.gov backslash PZC. Got it. All right. It's not the actual zoning regulations link yeah. on our website. It's a, a separate document under that PCC link. Everything's redlined. Okay. You know, once the once this process is over, we'll take that redlined version and incorporate it into fully revised books, which will be distributed to the commission at that time. So you're anticipating that stays open because we're going to have a lot of comments. Yes. In, in, uh, in fact, the booklet you get next in your. Friday packet this week will be 62 pages. Boy. And it will all be just the, this. We're not having any other. Nope. It's going to be the regs and the map, and then just. Couple so that's going to be the bulk of the agenda next week. Excellent. Okay. Anything uh, else, guys? Uh, oh, wait. We did have one piece of other business. One piece of other business. Can I ten. get a vote to uh, add other business? Add other business. Uh, motion? Mm -hmm. Certainly. I'll all right. All in favor? Good. Good. We're good. Go. The other business is the DCA Bird Sanctuary. Uh, which is at 274 Middlesex Road. Don't they want to add a rope bridge. I'm going to pass it down. It's a minor amendment to the special permit. And they needed this because of the... I, I don't know why they wanted to put the rope bridge in, but... No, no, they needed it because it was see large enough to... See the birds. It's just, you'll see the picture. I know. Uh, I'm just wondering why they even had to ask I think we, uh, it's just something we, we uh, could administer. Okay. Administrate Sorry. Uh, so, can I get a motion to approve the road? Actually, so let, we'll, let, let, let the administrator... Okay. Let's staff do it. Staff actually. approved it. Done. Thank you. All right. Motion to Should we just talk? Really, oh. We can talk afterwards just about the schedule. Uh, who's, yeah. Who's in it? Who's out? Okay. Motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? TV seventy nine.